So do you know about the curse of monads? That basically means that once you get what are monads, you lose the ability to explain it to somebody. So today we're going to break that. On the internet you can find all sorts of shits about monads, but to be honest, it is a really easy concept. But before understanding monads, let us see the prerequisites to learn about monads. We'll go through them first. So, so the first thing that you'll need is functional and pure functional programming paradigm. So let's just talk about this one. Functional programming paradigm, what is it? So the easiest way to understand this thing is to compare it with OOP, which is object-oriented programming. The functional means data is the input. And OOP means the data is actually the state. Now it can originate as an input, but it will be as a state. So let us consider a mathematical function y is equal to fx. Now, x is basically input to the function, and y is basically the output of the function. And similarly, in the case of OOP, let us consider an object is created with a constructor which has an input of x, but the x now is the state of the object. Now, in order to execute the same function, what you have to do is you have to plead to the object to execute that particular function. Now, you will get the particular results that you actually need. So the main difference here is that x is not actually stored in the functional programming paradigm. There is no any concept of a storage variable, which is a pure functional thing. So only functional can exist in languages like Rust and Lisp and stuff like that. And a pure functional language is basically Haskell, where you do not have anything. Everything is a pure function. Now, another concept that you have to understand is higher order function. Now the first order function is basically all of the kind of functions that you can pass like a variable and you can basically execute or something like that. But another function is there which you can actually return from a function. So let us consider a function which is a factory that will just return the function. And you can increase this chain to any length you want. It is going to be like function from a function from a function from a function as well. So these kind of functions are called higher order functions. So we're going to be producing functions and moving them around. Now let's talk about closers. Closers are basically functions with the state or access to its environment. So consider this example. Let us start typing code in Lua. So you have the function closure factory and a local variable x equal to zero. And you return a function which basically prints x plus three and increments x by three. So what you do if you actually produce that particular closure and you call it repeatedly, three will be added. So the state is actually stored with the function. The environment of the function is basically stored as an state there, which is basically a closure. But the thing about closure is that there are two kind of variables that is actually accessible to closures. The first type is a global variable, which is actually accessible to other functions as well. But in this case, what you can actually see is that that is a local variable, so it is not accessible to any other thing other than that particular closure. So it is like a private variable in object-oriented programming, OOP. Now, after your prerequisites are actually clear, let us talk about what a monad is. A monad is a really simple concept. The simplest explanation is that monads is basically a wrapper to a piece of data. Let us understand this simply. Consider a package factory, which produces futuristic packages inside of which you can put anything, but only at the time of manufacture. And the special thing about this package is that it will do everything that you instruct it to, to whatever that you have put inside it. Consider a package with a dog inside it, which means that you have manufactured that package which has a dog inside the particular package. But now what you can actually do is you can say to that package, make whatever inside it is a cat. Now the futuristic package modifies the dog into a cat. Here is the interesting part. The package that was first with you is not the same package because you have modified the thing inside. It will be like a brand new package, but there is a special condition of this package. So if you say keep the package empty or make the package empty, what it will do is that it'll just teleport the cat somewhere else, maybe on the table for putting all the things off the table. But now the package will be empty as well. And the functionality of following your instruction goes away. Now this package is basically a monad. Now the easiest way to actually understand monads is to look how is it actually used. Consider C++ here. In C++, you have STD optional. 
that is a monad basically so consider std optional now you have a constructor in std optional which is also called the unit function let us say you create a function that will actually return std optional of int and all this function actually does is basically divides the particular integer that is as input by two if it is even but if it is not then it will basically output null opt and if you do this auto result is equal to std optional 20 you create a monad which is optional and then you put the half function there and then you put the half function there a lot of times now what is going to happen now in this case what it is going to happen is that it will half until it is not even that is one so 20 half of 20 is 10 5 and 1 thing and then we'll basically stop executing because it is just nil right so as an optional option is like something can be there but it is optional it is maybe something maybe something can be there inside the box but it can be that something is not that so this particular type of optional or this particular type of monad is actually called maybe monad similarly if you consider as to the expected then it will have either error inside it or the value so this type is actually known as an either monad this is what monad is now enough with these kind of monads let's talk about lazy monads as well because all of the things that i've just shown to you is basically a simple monad which is a monad which will eagerly execute your bind function let's, let's talk about lazy monads by constructing it in lua so let us consider lazy function that will take value or function and then create a variable self which is we're going to return and if the type of the value of function is a function then put it into thunk and if it is not then basically put it into a function that will actually return that particular value and then create an and then function which will basically return a lazy type it's a little bit of recursive code here but it is all right so it will return this particular thing and then if v is not actually nil then it will execute the function and it will return the nil but the thing is that the whole thing is wrapped inside a function so that it will not execute it eagerly and there is a evaluate function will basically execute that long function inside the monad now what you can actually have is the chain you can see the same example with half you can just have the chain of halves but it will not be executed until you actually call eval that is basically super good for lazy computation so this is what monad was it is a very simple concept